Now, Israel's ambassador to the United Nations has told Sky News tonight that the Security Council's repeated condemnation of its actions in Gaza amounts to anti-Semitism. Daniel Danon described the preoccupation with Israel as an obsession. Well, I spoke to him earlier about the Syrian war, the future of the two-state solution and the recent resignation of America's ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley. She's a great friend of Israel and we are grateful for the strongest support we received in the United Nations. I felt it personally every day when she stood for the American values, for what is right. She was not afraid and we will always remember what she did for the state of Israel and for the values of the American people. So did you feel that the Americans were and are uh, strong supporters of, the, uh, of his, the state of Israel in the United Nations because, as you've often described, Israel has often described from its perception uh, the United Nations is, is biased against Israel? Unfortunately, it is. When you look at the number of resolutions against Israel in the General Assembly or in the Security Council, so when Ambassador Haley stood, she stood proudly, she represented the American interest, and she gave us her support. And for us, it was a real change when we felt her supporting us publicly, because we got the support of the U.S. also in the past. But the fact she publicly endorsed Israel meant a lot to us. There is a sense in there that Israel must be doing something wrong. And what is it? 45 resolutions condemning Israeli actions. Th that is a lot. We are open to criticism, but this is not criticism. This is even anti-Semitism. When you look at the number of resolutions condemning Israel in the Human Rights Council, compared to what's happening in Syria, for example, how many casualties you had in Syria in the last year, compared to the number of resolutions condemning the atrocities in Syria? So it has nothing to do with what's happening on the ground. It's pure hate. It's an obsession. And we hope it will change. And uh, when he was uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said it's uh, human nature to react to occupation, talking about the situation in Gaza. That was a, a shameful remark of, of the former Secretary General. We know that uh, we seek peace. We welcome any peace initiative. By the way, President Trump is going to engage, he's going to present his peace plan in a few weeks. We are open to discuss it. I want to get your perception of Russia the moment on the, on the global stage much discussed in the UK at the moment with the, the uncovering of the true identity of the uh, attackers in Salisbury which I'm sure you've been uh, following with with deep interest and from the Israeli point of view you've had a, a recent strong discussion let me put it that way with Russia concerning the uh, the downing of a Russian military aircraft uh, the uh, shot down by the Syrians but the Russians said it was Israeli aircraft that caused it they were carrying out an airstrike in Syria and used the Russian aircraft as cover we have uh, open uh, lines with the Russians we communicate with them we speak with them and we are concerned about the Iranians presence in Syria and we tell the, our Russians calling we will not allow the Iranians to take over Syria. Look what happened in Lebanon. They took over the entire nation. You have Hezbollah in our border. We will not allow them to do the same thing on the Golan Heights next to our borders. So that's why we keep close communication with the Russians. By the way, it's a small area. It's got very hard to communicate. And if you need to protect our interests when you have uh, Russians there, Syrians, Americans, it's a very complicated situation. It is very complicated, but of course the Russians are coordinating with the Syrians, but they must be cooperating with the Iranians as well. Does that not cause concern for Israel? I don't know if in the long run the Russians actually want to see the Iranians there. I'm not sure about that. But for us, we don't get involved in their interests. We focus on our interests, which is sending the Iranians back to Iran. Tell me about your attitude then to Bashar al-Assad. Uh, it's still official policy in the United Kingdom and many other countries that he is not part of the solution, that, that he must go. Can Israel live with Assad in control of the majority of Syria again? Well, our policy was and still is not to get involved in, in this civil war. It is unfortunate when we look at the pictures, the devastation, the atrocities, what he's doing to his own people, we condemn it, but we don't get involved. The only thing we did, we helped refugees who came to our borders, we provided humanitarian help uh, and supported them. But we do not get involved, but I think it's, you know, we saw what happened in the last few years in Syria, so I don't think we should have high expectations from him. So, I mean, it's interesting what you're saying, Ambassador. You will accept a more stable position as long as it doesn't involve the Iranians. That's the bottom line. I didn't say that. No, I, well, sorry, I, I'm putting words into your mouth. But, but would, would, that, would, that the, be, would that be shorthand for the Israeli Well, there, there are things that we cannot control. We, we acknowledge that. So we, don't, we want to control our borders. We want to seek stability. We don't want to see the Iranians on our border. We cannot control who will rule Syria in the future.
Lastly, uh, I'd like you uh, to comment on uh, what you see in uh, the United Kingdom in terms of the discussion in particular about anti-Semitism within the main opposition party, within the Labour Party. You've called out anti-Semitism on many occasions within the United Nations. Do you see the British Labour Party as having a large anti-Semitic element there and its failure, its leadership's failure to deal with it properly? We are very worried about it. Uh, I, I don't think we should label the, the Democratic Party, but when you see Mr Corbyn with whom he, he travels around the world, what he says about uh, Israel, and we are open for criticism, but this is pure anti-Semitism. We should say it out loud. Uh, we speak with uh, the Jewish community here. They are worried because, you know, our history, when you have leaders speaking against the Jews, we better be worried about it. And I hope that the people here in the UK uh, will choose the right people to lead their nation. You put it very eloquently there. That uh, I mean, do you find it puzzling sometimes that uh, people, uh, so-called intelligent people in the world of politics, don't seem to be able to understand the difference between the state of Israel and criticising its its actions as they are free to do, and uh, conflating we, 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 that and conflating that with with, with being a Jew. We, we are a democracy, you know. We criticise one each other all day long. Yeah, I know. And we are open for criticism from our. Uh, colleagues around the world, but what Mr. Corbyn is doing, it's not criticism. It's pure, pure hatred and it's unfortunate. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.